I started like experimenting and things like that. Cause my sisters don't cook, so it's okay. Don't hear talking too much. Oh my gosh! Yes. I Just Flavors Kitchen. My name is Morelis Urbano, and I am your host. Each episode, we are going to have two immigrant Jews competing with a recipe that matches the episode's featured category. I, along with a special guest, will be choosing a winner for the cook-off. And y'all better have some snacks ready at home, because I will be trying some good ones. Y'all ready to meet our chefs? Let's start. My name is Antonette. I live in Baltimore, but I was born and raised in Pennsylvania, and I'm the daughter of Liberian immigrants. My name is Emma, I'm from Pateco, Rhode Island, born in Portugal, and I immigrated to the U.S. when I was about two years old. Welcome, you guys. How are you feeling? I'm feeling splendid. I am so ready to try your dishes. My dish? I don't know about yours, babe. <laughs> I like the energy, I like the drama already. The category for the day is dough wrapped and fried. We are going to be giving you 90 minutes to surprise us with your dish and make some magic in the kitchen. Those 90 minutes, we are also giving you two gameplay buttons. The dance of button can actually make your opponent show you some dance moves while you make your dish. And the teamwork button can make your opponent actually help you make your own dish for three minutes. Well, I am not going to be the only one trying this food. We also have a really special guest for the day. And we are going to be judging based on the three criteria, which are flavor, presentation, and storytelling. We want to hear your stories. With that being said, let's welcome our special guest, a whole chef and content creator. Let's welcome David Nguyen. Oh my gosh, that's David. He's about to judge my food. Like, welcome. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you so much. It's a, such an honor to be here for me. Yes, well, if we're all set, we can start this countdown. What do you think? I'm ready. Are you ready? I am ready. Three, two, two one, go. My head is too big for this apron. I'm stressed because the apron doesn't even fit over my head. It had a whole layout plan, but now I'm sitting here, it's, I'm in the moment, and I'm like, what the heck am I going to do? Okay, first things first, I gotta wash the chicken. As soon as the cook-up starts, I put the apron on, I'm rushing to gather everything. The first thing I wanna get out of the way are the onions, because everyone hates cutting onions. I just need to chop up these onions and get them out the way. So what are y'all making today? Um, I'm gonna be making Liberian meat pie. I work at a Liberian restaurant back home. Yeah, I do. Liberian food is very spicy. Oh. Yes. They have no limits. Liberia is known for like really good food. Where I'm from in Pennsylvania, there's a little Liberian community. My mom would invite a whole bunch of people over and cook like every weekend. And it would be like a gathering where people would catch up with each other. I'm making pastos from Guinea-Bissau. Basically like the cousin of the empanada. <laughs> Same. We're distant cousins. We're spicy cousins. I can't wait to taste the heat. My parents are from a country in West Africa called Guinea-Bissau. When they were about like 19, 20, they moved to Portugal, and that's where I was born alongside my sister. Um, my parents moved over here because like, wow. since we're obviously we're black and it's Portugal, there's a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of, um, it wasn't as many black people when they, where they lived, so they experienced a lot of like racist situations. So, they moved to America. What was your experience like growing up? My brain didn't even register my status growing up. Especially this year, I felt very isolated. I don't know anyone else that's undocumented like me. So like right now, like just, you know, being a teenager and being undocumented is very difficult. Like I said, I can't drive, I can't legally work because I don't have a working permit. So it really makes you feel like, like um, isolated from your peers or you're not experiencing the same experiences that they're experiencing. It's, I have to factor in more things that people that are like my friends don't have to factor in, don't have to worry about. I have about an hour left. Yeah. Hello. I love your cutting techniques. <laughs> Thank you. Did grandma also show you how to do that? No, I learned this from my mom because 
She's uh, one thing about her. She's gonna make the little kids cut the, cut the onions and the peppers. Funny because that's how I started cooking. <laughs> I think this is good. And how do we know when it's cooked? I'm gonna cook it again, but on the skillet. Okay. So. As soon as I see Emma start to fry her chicken, I know I had to push that button and I had to throw her off her tracks. Music begins, the lights start changing color, and I'm like, oh gosh, I gotta start dancing. <laughs> It makes her want to dance a little bit chug. <laughs> Don't forget about your chicken. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you know what, Matt? It's a parsley dance. Yes. Oh, no. Ah, oh, yes. I think Antoinette hey. Antoine needs a little music herself. You're right over there, Antoinette. Don't Antone. click that button. <laughs> I need help. Shred some chicken for me. Uh, I want some finely shredded. Thank oh, you. She said finely shredded, and I just shredded. The pastels, the chicken has to be like finely shredded. So it takes a little, a little while to cut it up with the fork. I click the button. I make her shred the chicken while I continue chopping up the vegetables so I can refry the chicken again. Knives up and today you can go back to your dish. Thank you. Ladies, you're down to your last 30 minutes. Get okay. frying because time is flying. When did you guys just start cooking? I just recently started like testing out cooking because I kind of was always nervous to cook because my mom is like the best cook in the world. Just started when I um, went to college, and she couldn't like be there to tell me everything. It kind of like inspired me to start cooking more and trying other things. I started like experimenting and things like that. Cause my sisters don't cook, so if let's say my mom's out, she didn't cook, and my sisters and I didn't cook, they're just gonna starve. That's okay. Oh, you're talking too much. Oh my gosh! As I put her in frying. What do you need? Wait. I need you to help me cut these into circles. Oh. Ooh, I'm a little afraid for Emma's I, chicken. Oh my We're cutting it close. We're cutting it very close. No actually. pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Cutting We're circles. cutting it close. <laughs> Get it? Too stressed to be laughing right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I was literally, you want to burn my chicken. Can, can I stir it? Are you giving me leeway? Thank you. 20 minutes, ladies. Oh, I like the sound of that. Yes. So why do you choose this dish, Emma? This is like a staple dish. My community, any event, part, even if it's at a house, at a hall, anywhere. Pastels are like the go-to. Like people will like enter, first thing they want are the pastels. They're like, where, where are they at? Like, I need some. What do we have here so far? Um, well, right now I put some in to fry. I don't think the oil is as hot I as I would like it to be, but I'm kind of running out of time. Mm. Her oil is not as hot as mine. She's taking way longer to fry. So I have a little bit more of an advantage because my oil is at a perfect temperature to fry my vegetables. Well, at least you're frying already because there's 12 minutes left on the clock. Yes. Ladies, there's nine minutes left on the clock. So what are you expecting from these dishes? You know what, I'm very excited for to try both dishes because of the story and the history um, that they shared. And it is looking great from what I'm seeing right now. Um, but I'm gonna keep that to myself and wait to taste it before I make my decision. Ladies, three minutes left on the clock. See, Antone is ready on the plate up. She is focused. 
And my sister's still frying. One minute, ladies. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Congratulations. <laughs> Y'all did it. Yes. Hey, I think it's the time that we all been waiting for. Absolutely. To try the food. Yeah, excited. Yes. Okay, well, let's just start trying these dishes. And today we're going to start with you. Don't drop it. Our chef and Tene made Liberian meat pie. Slightly sweet flaky and crusty with a succulent beef filling. It comes together quickly and flies off the table. This is Liberian meat pie with a pepper sauce in the middle. I used to make this with my cousins and my grandma a lot. In Liberia, there's a lot of like finger food because a lot of people are on the go, like on the sides of the streets, you have people selling water, Kool-Aid. I just chose to make this because it brought me back uh, good memories of my grandma and my cousins. And today, how does this dish connect to your immigrant identity? Well, I feel like a lot of different cultures have the same dish, so um, to see it made in a different way, I haven't really tried it um, in any cultures that have it spicy and like put an emphasis on the spicy sauce and stuff. So like, I feel like that's how it connects. I'm wondering if the judges are gonna like it. Is it gonna be too spicy? Is it gonna be over seasoned or under seasoned? Is it gonna be cooked just right or too hard? Internet, thank you so much for sharing that beautiful story. Thank now you. I am ready to try our next dish. Hello. Let's see. Oh, what do we got here? Mm. Presenting, I'm channeling my aunts all in from Rhode Island. They call themselves <laughs> the sisters of Guinea Bissau. So. <laughs> our chef Emma made pastéis chima satenra. These are traditional pastries of Guinea-Bissau's cuisine, similar to pasties, in the shape of a crescent of tender dough filled with delicious seasoned meat. Since I was a little girl, all I, re all I remember are my aunts congregating in the kitchen. Everyone has their own little station, they're all making their food, and they're playing on selling it, you know. It's a community. The ironic thing is that like none of us are like related by blood. We all immigrated from Guinea-Bissau, and we, they all formed a community in Rhode Island. It's a very surreal moment. It's kind of like an out-of-body experience. I have my actual blood like aunt in England, my grandma's in England. I've never like, last time I seen them, I was like six months old. I've never, I haven't seen them. I was, can't go visit her, obviously. I can't leave the state, can't, can't leave the country. Last time I seen my mom, I was probably like nine or eight. So to have like these women that I've known since I was like two or three, since I came to America, they have been like my like my blood family. But the, the pastels for me just give me that like sense of family and just like being connected. I can definitely feel that vibe from this dish. It, it is amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Well, now it's time for us to reach a final decision. You guys both did an amazing job. I already know the winner. Do you? Mm, I'm not sure yet. Uh, just kidding. I'm not sure either. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> it is going to be hard. But we have to choose a winner, so let's do it. All right. After such an intense battle between our two contestants, we finally reached a decision. But first, David, I would love if you gave our audience a couple words of encouragement. You got it. As an immigrant myself with pretty similar experience to the both of you, I want to encourage you and our viewers at home to embrace your ethnicity, be proud of your heritage, and continue to chase your dreams. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much for that. Well, it's time for us to announce the winner. Now, it was very difficult for us to make the decision because both had very great qualities. I loved Emma's story and the flavors from Antoine's. It was difficult for us, but at the end of the day... You have to choose a winner. The lights are flashing and the judges are about to make decisions. Who's gonna win? Is it gonna be me or is it gonna be Emma? I'm just, I'm just standing there. I'm standing there, I'm next to them, and I don't know who's gonna win, to be honest. But like, at the end of the day, regardless of who wins, I'm just very happy and grateful that I was able to come and experience this and to have fun and to like present my culture and make this dish. It's, it's a tie! tie. <laughs> Congratulations. Good job. Maybe there is enough space in the kitchen for both of us. A tie. <laughs> I 
I accept the tie. Because that, you know, that means our dishes were both top tier. Because they couldn't decide. They couldn't choose which one they like more. So that's good. You did an amazing job, the both of you guys, like I said. There's enough yeah. room in the kitchen for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, I would love to hear some words from you guys that you have for our audience. I just want to say that you don't have to try to fit in. You should stay true to yourself. Um, find your people and also finding other immigrants that are, maybe aren't in your culture. Um, but share similar experiences like all of us. It's good to like embrace your differences, but come together and unify with our similarities. Like stay true to yourself and like don't let other people dictate what you can and can't do in life. There's always a way. You choose your own path. Um, yeah, there'll be obstacles, you know, a few hindrances, but then at the end of the day, you will get to where you want to be. It just takes persistence and determination. Thank you so much. Those were amazing words. Well, now we got to my favorite part. I'm taking some leftovers, so. What do you have there? Yeah. Um, what is this? Let's start packing this. Yeah. This is what I'm eating for the rest of the day. giving it an African party when we go home. <laughs> <laughs>